Hello! In this video I am going to make a brief introduction to the terms inner product and inner product space. I will start with a few words about notation. The notation of the inner product is defined differently in different sources. Sometimes it's denoted by regular parentheses, like this. And sometimes it's denoted with triangular brackets like this. Personally I prefer the second notation because the first one can be a bit confusing. For example if you have something like this written then it may be an open line on the number line for numbers between 3 and 5 exclusively it may be a point on a two-dimensional plane where the x value is 3 and the y value is 5 and sometimes if you have something like when when you don't know what the x and y are they may be vectors or they may be scalars then you have no way of immediately telling what are you looking at right here now in the case that what x, x and y are vectors it may be an inner product but in order to prevent the confusion I will be using the notation of the triangular brackets one more thing about notation is the letters that I'm going to use so when whenever I use Greek letters like alpha like alpha beta gamma those will be scalars and whenever I use Latin letters like A B C those are going to be vectors by this point you should be familiar with the notion of a uh, linear space. For example, we have the linear space R to the N. It's a linear space, also known as a vector space. This linear space contains all the vectors that has n elements to them. We also can say that they are n-dimensional. And all of those elements are real numbers. By real I mean not complex. So we can say that Rn is a linear space over the field of real numbers. just to remind you the difference between a space and a field a space contains mathematical structures like vectors, matrices, polynomials, etc. while a field contains all the elements from which those structures are built like the real numbers or the complex numbers I haven't given here a strict formal definition of what is a field and what is a space but for now this will be enough maybe I'll get to it later Another term which should be familiar to you is the dot product, also known as a scalar product of two vectors. Just to remind you, I'll write it down, I'll switch colors. A dot product is like when you have two vectors v dot u and we can write them down in the form of their components alpha 1 2 alpha n 
dotted will be the one to beta n and this equals to the sum between 1 and n of alpha i times beta i. This is a dot product and it is also known as the standard inner product but there are other types of inner products and we will talk about them soon enough. We know that the dot product operation has the following four characteristics. So, dot product I'll try to build a chart now those four characteristics are symmetricity linearity homogeneity and positivity Now I'll write the meaning of those characteristics for the dot product. That means sym symmetricity means that when you have a dot product of two vectors v dot u it is equals to u dot v. Here is how the linearity works if you have a sum of vectors let's say u plus v that is dotted with w it is equals to u not w plus v dot w now I will show you how the homogeneity works let's say we have a scalar lambda which scales the vector v and this scaled vector is dotted with the vector u so the homogeneity tells us that this is equals to the scalar lambda multiplied by the dot product of v and u and finally we have positivity and the characteristic of positivity tells us that a vector dotted with itself is always equals or greater than zero. Also, if a vector dotted with itself is actually equals to zero, it happens if and only if the vector v is zero the zero vector of course not the scalar zero now the reason why I have made this into a chart is because those characteristics are characteristics of all the inner products not only the dot product which is the standard inner product so I will now write those characteristics 
in the general form of the inner product. Switch colors. This is the symmetricity. This is the linearity. The homogeneity. and positivity. I am going to add another line in this chart. This line will be for regular multiplication that you are all familiar with from elementary school. The reason I add multiplication to this chart is because I found this to be an easy way to remember the characteristics of that inner product which are not terribly intuitive as I see it. Whenever I try to remember the characteristics of inner products I always think about the characteristics of multiplication. So basically when you have alpha times beta, it is always equals to beta times alpha. When you have alpha plus beta times gamma, it equals to alpha times gamma plus beta times gamma. And when you have alpha times beta in parentheses times gamma, it's equal to alpha parentheses beta times gamma. And of course you have a positivity when you have alpha squared it is always equal to or greater than zero also alpha squared equals to zero if and only if alpha equals to zero. The names of those characteristics are different for some reason. It would be easier if the names were also the same names for the inner product and for the multiplication. The rule of symmetricity in multiplication is called commutativity. The rule of linearity in multiplication is called distributivity and the rule of homogeneity in multiplication is called associativity. While the positivity is sometimes called the positivity of even powers. Every real number that you raise to an even power will always be equals to or greater than zero. I'll raise the rest of the chart that's a bad way to do it.
Yep, that's it. So now actually you have the formal definition of what an inner product is. Every inner product possesses those four characteristics. I'll write this down. A function that takes two vectors from a space V and returns a scalar from the field F and has the four characteristics described above is called an inner product. This is a formal definition. Those four characteristics are also known as the axioms of the inner product. Now that we know what an inner product is, it's time to define what an inner product space is. I will start by giving you the formal definition Every vector space, also known as a linear space, V over the field F with a defined, not necessarily the standard, inner product function is called an inner product space. If the field is the real numbers, then the inner product space is called Euclidean space. If the field is the field of complex numbers, then the space, then the inner product space is called a unitary space. So if we are given a linear space V of the field R, we can come up with many functions that will have the four required characteristics and will take two vectors from V as arguments and return a scalar from R, every such function will be an inner product, but not necessarily a standard one. In the next video, we will take a deeper look at some of the characteristics that we've been talking about, and also we will see an example of a non-standard inner product and solve some exercises.